Holy Spirit manifests as the spirit of the fear of the Lord. The fear of God has taken a natural exit out of the lives of a lot of Christians. Grace covers everything for them. Grace covers adultery. Grace covers covetousness. Grace covers stealing. Grace covers divorce. Remind, divorce, remind, divorce, remind. That is your own kind of grace. My own kind of grace is the one that I see in scripture. Titus chapter 2, verse 11 to 12. The Bible says, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us to deny all ungodliness. Grace is a teacher against ungodliness. Grace discourages ungodliness. Grace is not a partner with sin. If your own grace is the one that endorses and encourages sin, you are on your own. When you die in faith, God, you will tell God that that is the grace he gave you in the scripture. So the spirit of the fear of God, you need to pray about it. Then you penetrate your hearts, your wife's hearts, your children's hearts. God, the spirit also manifests as the spirit of counsel. 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 When you look at people and give them two minutes counsel, issues of life that have rocked their world. You know, counsel is not just secular counsel. Secular counsel is very good. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the spiritual dimension of counsel. We are the only spirits we give you an idea. And you will present that idea to people that are in problem. Do this, do this, do this, and you will solve all their problems. This is where the church has competitive edge. The world is confused. You go and check what is going on across the globe. They are confused. Economies are failing. Professors are failing. Because Jesus is the answer the world has refused to accept. Jesus is the answer the world has refused to accept. Now the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. John 16, 13, 1 John 4, verse 6, called the Holy Spirit the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth. Not just your truth, but his truth. We live in a world that has many truths. For a man to be married to a man is a truth. But that is not the truth. The Bible says, Christ is the head of the whole wife. That is God's truth. Society flattens that thing. The Bible says, children, obey your parents in the law. For this is the will of God. That is God's truth. All the world has what is called child, child's right. <laughs> that if that is your own truth, you have missed it. The spirit of God is spirit of truth. Not your truth, but God's truth. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of grace and supplication. Zechariah 12 verse 10. That is the anointing that comes upon people to pray. The spirit of grace and supplication is the anointing for intercession. If it comes upon you, you pray ceaselessly. You pray effortlessly. You pray with precision. You pray with accuracy. Finally, the Holy Spirit is called the spirit of holiness. Romans chapter 1 verse 4. And there are so many other dimensions of the Spirit of God. So many dimensions. We are in the last days. The Lord wants to pour out His Spirit upon you, upon your family. And you have to be empty of self. God does not feed food people. You have to be empty. God fills empty people. Empty yourself of self. If you are full, as you are, you cannot be filled by God. You cannot. You have to desire it. You have to thirst for it. And you have to make yourself available. In the book of Acts chapter 4 verse 31, the apostles gathered together. They wanted the outpouring of the Spirit. The Bible says after they had prayed, the place where they were was shaken. And they were all filled with the Spirit. So prayer is one of the critical, critical foundations for provoking the manifestations of the Spirit. And if you do not want to miss out on the manifestations of God in these last days, you better take your prayer.